Holy fucking shit. Boy. Game three tonight between the Toronto Raptors and the Milwaukee Bucks was played at the Scotia Bank Arena. And my God, guys, tonight it was a battle of fucking attrition. Literal attrition. Every point Milwaukee got, Toronto would answer back. And this this was a closed game throughout, with the exception of of uh probably the first half i'm gonna have to say i think the first quarter you know raptors led by 11 but after that first quarter man it was tense throughout two overtimes the last time there's been a double overtime game in the eastern conference final was in 2007 let that sink in for a moment let that freaking sink in over 10 years ago holy crap I don't even know where to begin except for like I'm gonna go through oh man these no I cut down the notes guys but I was gonna do this tomorrow but then I realized shit uh, I want to get it done now because I want to watch Thrones afterwards and yes I did not watch Thrones because Thrones can frig off this is way more important than Thrones right now so okay first quarter I'm gonna keep this real short Toronto comes out with more intensity good timeout after back to back threes uh, by the Milwaukee Bucks cut the lead to five Nick Nurse you know what. I've been very critical of Nick Nurse the the entire uh, series, As, starting from Philadelphia. I have been very critical of Nick Nurse, and tonight he did he he was not as terrible. Let let's just say that he wasn't as bad. He he showed that he was actually able to make adjustments this game. And what I mean by this is he put Norman Powell, Superman, the X Factor for Toronto in. What have I been? What have I been telling? You know, everyone. Well, not even everyone, but I've I've stated in my previous videos. I stated this as early as the Orlando Magic series, and I stated on Reddit multiple times. This man can be trusted. He has saved Toronto's postseason twice with Dwayne Casey as his head coach. Let that sink in. The man, as a backup two guard, who's often forced to play the three guard undersized has saved toronto's postseason off the bench he did it in indiana we all remember game five he did it against milwaukee two years ago so thank you nick nurse you already did better than last game by slotting norman powell into the lineup and you put him in early when danny green was struggling i truly believe that in order for this series if the raptors have any chance of winning it norman powell is going to be one of your key answers now, Ibaka was also brought in early, and this is kind of the, he finally, Nick Nurse finally made the adjustments. He brought in Ibaka with Lowry and without Fred Van Vliet. So I'm thinking at this point, great job, great job. And you know what Norm starts doing? He starts getting buckets. The man was sensational tonight. He was sensational. Look at this. 30 minutes played, 19 points. You know who played more than him? Danny Green. Only three points, but you know what? I don't really blame Danny Green's problems uh, too much. Well, he, he does deserve his fair share of blame, but we'll get to Danny Green later. I think a lot of the reason why Danny Green is struggling has to do with the way the Raptor offense works. Now, so we go to the second quarter, right? Norm keeps piling up the points. I swear to God, in so many moments where the Raptor offense was dead because one, Kawhi had to catch his breath or shots were not falling, this man kept the lead and the point differential. Norman Powell's shots, that every shot he made, you know, gave me a sigh of relief. I was like, okay, just Norm, you keep doing you. You are doing fan-fucking-tastic right now, all right? And now we get to Danny Green. So Danny Green, it's become very clear um, after the Philadelphia series and even during the series itself that you need to put him in a role like J.J. Redick had. The only problem is uh, Toronto's offense, I just don't think – like I know it's, it emphasizes ball movement and like get, letting Kawhi do an ISO on his own island, right? But I just don't think um, there's enough – like. The way it's run, like the way they want to focus on like doing quick cuts and drives that Danny Green can ever uh, be 
impactful in the offense. And what I mean by this is there's not any set plays run for Green as an, enough, like it's not run frequently enough to where he can establish a rhythm. They, they, they're telling him to catch it immediately when he hasn't shot the ball for fucking, you know, two quarters or 14 minutes, shit like that, or when he's missed like five. Like he, he needs to get into a rhythm early. Um, and remember, a lot of this also is on him just not making the shots. But I think him struggling, yeah, I think 50% of that you have to attribute to the way the offense is playing out. I could be wrong about this point. This is probably a hot take, but that's just my personal opinion, right? So I noticed in the second quarter as well, uh, Kawhi is fatigued. And this is something I noted in that moment. This is going to need to be addressed because Kawhi is laboring out there. Now, he did suffer what I think to be a little bit of a leg injury uh, in the first quarter when he went for a dunk. And um, throughout the whole night, you could see that it was actually he – did, he did his best to not let it bother him. But you could see he was a little bit – one second, one step a little slower, and it – you could just see him grimacing every once in a while, trying to grab on to, you know, that injured part of the leg. Same thing with Lowry and his, like, uh, wrist, which he injured, I think, last game. Yeah. So I was actually extremely worried once Kawhi started getting fatigued because in my head, I'm like, okay, so Norm steps up to be what what is essentially the third option, which I basically have always said Toronto needs that third option. And now your first option goes out shit, someone's going to have to step up to be the first option. You're going to have Norm do it? I mean, I think he can, but you still need that third option. So someone needs to fill that role, right? So later on, Nick Nurse sticks the uh, FBV, Lowry, and Norman again. And I'm like, oh, shit, here we go again. Here we go again. And, you know, no scoring occurs. I think he sticks it in uh, for two minutes, and he quickly realizes that uh, it's not working out. So he puts Ibaka in for FVV because Toronto got killed on the offensive glass tonight. And if he didn't put Ibaka into that second quarter, I promise you, this game would not have been won. This We would not have reached overtime. Because rebounding, like, even though the Raptors lost hard on the board tonight, Ibaka made it, made the game winnable, right? So Norm's playing well. Pascal's having a bounce back game which is great. Lowry's hitting threes. We're seeing some of the regular shooting return to form. And, you know, with that core of Pascal, Lowry, and Norm, you know, the the pressure on Kawhi is kind of like, for the temporary part, like, reduced. He doesn't have as much pressure to perform. And it spaces the floor out. Because uh, if you triple Kawhi, well, congratulations. Norm's now going to be able to stick a shot. Pascal is, you know, waiting. And... This actually helped out a lot because if we didn't, I, I promise you, if Powell was not slotted into this game, I would have not, I, I would have just straight up just turned off the game and said, this shit's over in four. Thank God Powell was played. He was critical in tonight's win. Critical. All right. Now, something else I noticed about Nick Nurse as well, and this is actually some praise for him. He, that little befuddled face and passiveness that everyone assumed he had was gone. He was pissed off, yelling, being very aggressive, telling his players to get the fuck into their positions. And you know what? Good job, Nick Nurse. Good job. Because you showed that you're not going to roll over and just be like, whoa, whoa what am I going to do? No, you tell your players to do what the fuck they're supposed to do. And you hold them accountable. We saw this with Green's minutes being reduced tonight. He was being, he was taken out. You don't count the overtimes. This man's minutes are reduced. Simple as that, right? And Powell actually got more playing time because of that. Now I still don't really understand uh, the decision to not put Ibaka in as much. I mean, he did, he was as good as he could be this game. Uh, I would have liked to see him have a little bit of more time other than 14 minutes, right? But whatever happens. So I go on to the third. Uh, uh, Oh wait, sorry. Before I end the second quarter, uh, I also noticed this: Bucks are walling off Kawhi, and the Raptors are doing the same to Giannis. And in my head, that's like, okay, so stop the superstars, which means everyone else needs to contribute. And you know, for the past two games, I would say that, well, not even the past two games, but in game two, clearly, 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 Milwaukee was doing a better job. It seems that Toronto finally picked up on how to like properly establish a wall or a defense on Giannis. Now, a lot of this can be due to fatigue or just bad rhythm, but they did it this game. Okay. And then TNT broadcast. I did not watch um, the Sportsnet broadcast tonight because uh, I was like, you know what? I'm going to switch it up because I couldn't really handle the um, the lag, like the repetitiveness of the TSN Sportsnet one. So I watched TNT and they said, they kept saying, Powell should be in. Powell should be in. I'm like, thank you. Thank you. Someone agrees. 
right? I'm not, I'm not crazy for for thinking this. So I go into the third quarter. Uh, we see the three guard lineup again. However, this time I'm not gonna fault the three guard lineup because uh, the way the second quarter ends is with Kawhi uh, being rested and Green having an off night. And you're also you also need to rest. Uh, I think they rested Lowry temporarily. I, I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure it was Kawhi had to be rested and Green was doing terrible. So in this particular situation, Nick Nurse had no fucking choice but to slot that three-guard lineup in there. You're not going to take off Norm. And if you put on Ibaka, well, then you, then he, he hasn't been established in a rhythm yet. So, you know, maybe you put on Ibaka to avoid that Fred Van Vliet-Lowry situation. But you know what? I'm not gonna fault it too much in this in this particular instance because um, Kawhi was off and needed his rest, so so be it, right? And Powell was actually lighting it up, so you know as long as the point differential can remain the same with Kawhi off, I'm thinking okay, stick to this three guard lineup because clearly um, you're not gonna change too much of it, and if it's working right now in this situation, don't change it. Right, so Powell continues to excel. Uh, Gasol this game, and we haven't touched on Gasol, but Gasol this game, I liked what he did this game. Uh, not not his points, but just his overall aggressiveness. Uh, he had a couple of shacked in a fool moments, you know, these weird passes or turnovers. I'm not gonna fault him on that, or him falling down and losing the ball. Uh, that's fine with me because what I saw today from Gasol was like. 2014, 2013 de defensive player of the year Gasol return with his post moves. Not even that, but with his, you know, eagerness to get into the paint, he hit half of his three-point shots today as well. So, you know, he was really frustrated after game two. I didn't know if he was going to bounce back, you know, because prior, you know, prior prior to game um, game three today, he was shooting 30 from 20 from the field, right? I didn't think he was going to come back. Same how I didn't think Danny Green was going to come back from his poor shooting. He still hasn't, but, you know, that's a different story. But credit to Gasol because uh, he was not tilted this game. And I saw some aggression come back to him. He still kind of hot potato the passes, but he wasn't so afraid to, like, be aggressive today. Or he wasn't passive, in my opinion. So, you know what, Gasol? Good job. I'm a, you're shocked enough, fool. Shit happens. Whatever. Right? And Siakam makes two corner threes in this third quarter. And this is... um. This is huge because up until those threes, Milwaukee had been going on a little bit of a run and Toronto's offense has gotten a little bit stagnant. Uh, Powell had just gotten subbed back in, so he was kind of, um, what was it? I think he was just a little bit off, so to speak. But he was still uh, he was still sensational. Now, we get to a point late in the third quarter where Powell gets five fouls, and I'm thinking to myself, oh, that's not good. That's really, really bad because at this point, he's the third option. Now he's going to have to play, um, you know, a little bit more passive in hopes that he didn't draw the foul. Uh, Fred Van Vliet, you know, he, he had one um, three in the fourth quarter, which was impactful. But overall, not too good shooting. I will say this, though. His defense this game um, was pretty good. His he was He managed to actually disrupt a lot of dribbles and passes, mainly dribbles. And I'm going to say this about Fred Van Vliet. While I have been critical about him and a lot of people have i think that playing him tonight over abaka in terms of minutes uh while it wasn't the smartest decision i really think that abaka should have gotten at least 22 and you put fred down a little bit i, I really think that uh you can he did the best he could tonight you know his shot wasn't falling uh he hit one shot which is pretty much all you could really expect him to do at this point especially against the length of milwaukee and you know, he 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 was defensively okay tonight. So, uh, because you can't expect so much from someone who's that undersized. Um, and I've never been too, like, my criticism of Fred Van Vliet's always been, why is Nurse putting him in this position? Uh, obviously, I hate it when he doesn't make his shots, because that's the only thing he can do. But Nurse... Really, a lot of the times, it's Nurse putting him in this position where he's going to get exploited because he doesn't have the length, right? And Nurse is telling him to outplay him when he's just going to get outrun and shit like that. But you know what? Fred, tonight, I'm going to – we're just going to say average. You, 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 you did what you did the best you could. So that's what that is, right?
Now, uh, they also somehow managed to make Lowry and FVV work together. I'm surprised that they went back to this. I still think this needs to be cleared up. I really think you cannot have Lowry and Fred Van Fleet on the floor at the same time. Uh, at bottom line, even if that means putting F Lowry on rest and F like Fred and Norm, I think that's way better in terms of rest and in terms of like uh, dealing with foul trouble. And oh boy, guys, foul trouble was a problem. Gasol gets literally fucking five fouls, and um, we're moving into the fourth quarter now, right? Gasol gets five in the four. Pascal gets three. Lowry gets five, and it's and Nick Nurse stays on him, stays with him, right? And uh, I'm just thinking to myself, oh man, this is if this 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 could be really really risky because now that defensive intensity is going to have to let up. That where the referees are going to have to swallow their whistles, right? What's going to be more likely? And uh, we also see that the offense once again stagnates a little bit in the fourth quarter. Danny Green and Fred Van Vliet combined at one point to be one of sixteen, and it's just it was it was absolutely dreadful. Um, I was, it just just fucking dreadful, right? And I'm at that time I'm saying get Ibaka and Powell in, get those two in. But uh, Powell I think was resting, and uh, he also had five fouls to deal with. And I think Nick Nurse wanted him to be more ready uh, later down the stretch, and it proved to be the correct decision. Then Lowry fouls out, and I'm thinking to myself, oh man, this isn't good. Now you have to rely on Fred Van Vliet to lead the offense as the primary ball handler. That's not good. That's really bad. Really really bad and um i I'm, I'm super worried at this point because my per my analogy of the raptors at this point is leaking oil you've lost your point guard right you could you're very close like to fucking losing norman power your third option and the bucks are getting some momentum back and there was a point in the fourth quarter where uh nick nurse calls like a super late timeout i personally think it was like two positions after the lowry foul out and i personally think the moment lowry fouls out you call a timeout Get your guys settled in and say, okay, guys, we're still in this. This is what we're going to do, you know? But, yeah, what it happened. Fred Van Vliet makes an impactful three at this moment in time to basically keep the momentum and the spirit of Toronto alive. And uh, I'm thinking to myself, shit, Toronto needs to find a way to win this because Lowry's gone. And literally a minute after, Norm fouls out. With one minute left in the fourth quarter, Nor like, Norm's gone. And the score is like super fucking close. I think it's literally a two-point game. Um, and, I'm, and Milwaukee, keep in mind, they did not lead this entire game until the fourth quarter. I think it was like it was like 88 to 86 when they led, or 90 to 88, something like that. It was around that range when Milwaukee got their first lead. And Toronto, at that point when Norm fouls, I'm like, shit, that's the third option gone, the second option gone. Second and third option are gone, right? Gasol hasn't been like getting as many shots uh, until like after the first half because that's where he's best utilized in the first half because that's when he has his most energy, right? But Gasol hasn't gotten many shots at this point. I'm thinking to myself, and Kawhi's injured too. So I'm really starting to think we have half of a scoring option. We don't even have a one option. We have 0.5 option at this point. Like Kawhi is clearly injured and I'm just thinking, oh my God, how are they going to do this? This is... This everything is trending towards Milwaukee pulling out a steal for a win, and Kawhi is clearly injured. He's he tries to I think um you know pull up from the elbow in front of Middleton or I think it was Brogdon and it just doesn't work out. Like you he, there's like very little elevation on his shot compared to previous games, and um, you know Tor Toronto gets a break eventually like a possession later and uh, Siakam chokes on free throws and everyone's going to remember this moment if the Raptors lose this game how Siakam choked on two free throws and I was uh, I literally was clenching my fist like holy shit we catch a break and they foul Siakam who's been like a pretty good free throw sh shooter and he just happens to miss both then to, then the Bucks tie it up guys the Bucks tie it up and I'm like oh my god literal fucking attrition um, at this point, when we go into the first OT, rebounding is really fucking bad because everyone's fatigued. Shots are missing, and you kind of see both teams. What they start to do is they start to kind of forsake the three-point line a lot. They're trying to draw the foul, trying to drive it in and um, get the easy bucket, or at least that's what the Bucks are doing. I noticed that their three-point shooting was awful um, later down the stretch. I think Chris Middleton was 3 of 13 in this game, so he he wasn't too good. Um, and yeah, they're th aside from Malcolm Brogdon, they, no one was really hitting consistent threes uh, from the fourth onwards. Right? Everyone is gassed. So 
you know, first OT basically finishes up, and I'm just like, what the fuck are they going to do? Because the Raptors continue to tag on more fouls. It's also important to know that Giannis was at five. So I was kind of hoping, okay, so if Giannis is at five, if he can foul out, there's a chance for Toronto to take this. And you know what he does in the second OT, guys? He fouls out. And at that moment, I'm like, okay, Toronto still isn't safe, though, because um, everyone's so fucking fatigued. And I'm thinking to myself, the pain has opened up, and it makes it exploitable for Kawhi and Siakam. But how... How much more can Kawhi take? How much? Because Kawhi played 52 minutes. Siakam played 41 minutes tonight. No, 51 minutes tonight. Do they really have that energy right now? Especially with Kawhi injured to take it to the paint. And then Fred Van Lee gets his fifth foul. And the answer for that Kawhi question was yes. He still had enough in the tank. The man took over. He rose to the occasion injured. Scored eight points in OT to win the fucking game. He had one bad turnover. You know what he does? He gets a steal on another, gets dunk to make up for that turnover. Siakam redeems himself with a block onto Brooke Lopez. And guys, Toronto with Kawhi win the game. The heroics of Kawhi Leonard and the and Siakam. But as as great as Leonard was tonight, this win would not have been possible without Norm Powell. The X Factor has risen again and hopefully he's here to stay this was a fantastic game guys we got to end this if you're if you were feeling kind of down like i was about losing those first two games especially game one in that heartbreaking fashion right this lends you hope because when everyone's gone when every scoring option is basically nullified and the and it, the, the opposing team is tripling you know Triple teaming, quadruple teaming, swarming, trapping, just doing everything they can to stop the only light on your team. That light still finds a way to shine as bright as you can. Injured. Keep that in mind. Toronto guys found a way. They found a way to get it done tonight. That's the most important thing. Lowry didn't play for over eight minutes because he was gone in the fourth. And Toronto, with 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 inexplicable you know, Will from Kawhi Leonard found a way. They found a way to win. And after a win like this, guys, you know that they're going to go into game four tired as fuck, but invigorated, confident. But you know the same thing for the Bucks. They're going to go in pissed off. They're going to go in knowing that, damn, we could have got this. And I expect game four to be another close one. So yeah, guys, I will see you after game four on Tuesday. Now I'm going to go watch some Thrones.